Product not yet rated. The community was massively important to the success of Sniper Elite V2 and there was such a dedicated following and positive community who, who were always raving about Sniper Elite and every time we released screenshots or a trailer you know these guys would get in and they were really excited about it and that just buoys uh, the morale of the development team when they see that kind of enthusiasm even before the games come out so, so that is just so important. Rebellion responded to that by, res by releasing multiplayer maps for up to 12 months after the initial release of um, Sniper V2, both the single player missions but also multiplayer maps. And what people perhaps don't realise is that even in those maps we were responding to the feedback. Um, the non-linear gameplay was already something people were desperately craving. And in one of the last maps we released, which was called Nerdorf Outpost, we'd already been r and d for Sniper Elite 3 by that time. And that was actually sort of like a test level where we did a non-linear level, um, so it was much more open. And people really enjoyed that map and responded to it very well. And um, yeah, it's just interesting that that was already really had a lot of the, the DNA of a Sniper Elite 3 level, but in the Sniper Elite 2 era. Um, so it was really exciting for us. So as part of addressing the concerns from the community about the linearity, we've been trying to really promote expansive choices within the environment. So as you pull up your binoculars and sort of assess the lay of the land in front of you, uh, will have sort of really key visual language which, which promotes that player choice in the environment. So whether or not you uh, see ahead of you a bunch of like ruins and, and a density in the environment, you might actually decide to stealth down into there and play a bit of cat and mouse with the enemy, take them out with your new suite of, of stealth kills. Uh, alternatively, you might actually sight a nice ridge line, so you'll move your way up there and sabotage a, a generator on the way to create a sound mask and then start raining down on them from above. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can pro approach the environment and, and we try to really feed back to that by getting information through your binoculars. I think being set in, in the North African sort of campaign has really afforded us a lot of opportunities with the environment. So we take the player from like really sort of dense, like kind of creepy looking fort settings to, to one of our environments is described as a bit of a sniper's paradise, which is literally the side of a canyon. And um, we, we have sniper gameplay sort of taking forth across this canyon. Uh, we've got oasis, so there's really rich colours and, and sort of a, a versatile palette for the player there. You're not just going to be having wall-to-wall you know, -wall sand. It's, it's quite, quite varied. The massive points of feedback mainly were non-linear levels and AI. And those two things really was, were very close, closely tied. You know, even uh, with the best AI systems in the world, if you have linear gameplay, it's difficult for, for AI uh, characters to, to, to work effectively if they're in a corridor type space. So by opening up the levels much more, and we did actually rewrite the AI systems as well, it means that both of those things work just much more coherently and the gameplay straight from the off is, is much better. I think one of the things that people really struggled with with the AI in Sniper Elite V2 was that it felt like it would punish you immediately for a single mistake that you might make. So particularly if you're trying to play stealthily, uh, it felt really, really tough. Uh, that's something we're really striving to uh, move away from this time around and uh, improve on the way that feels for the player so that they can be empowered to be stealthy. In Sniper Elite 3, we're trying to get realistic human reactions from the enemies. So when they hear a shot from you, uh, assuming they don't see you directly, they don't immediately know where that shot came from, which is true to a scenario in real life. Uh, if you continue firing from that position, then the enemy will uh, quickly become 
very suspicious of that position. They'll they'll try and find out where the noise is coming from, who's shooting from there, uh, and investigate. And at that point, you know, if they see you, then you're in a lot of trouble. But once you've been found, you have to relocate. You have to get as far away from the enemy as you can without being spotted again. Uh, once you get to the required distance away, then uh, the urgency of the enemy search for you will de-escalate and uh, they'll abandon their search and at that point it's uh, more straightforward for you to then re-engage in stealthy behaviour and, uh, and continue on your way.